So this is a space shuttle, pretty incredible, but not used anymore to get to the International Space Station. The actual mass of all of this was about 2 million kilograms, but it was accelerated with these massive booster rockets until it got fast enough to actually get into this low Earth orbit. But what were some of the forces involved on takeoff? Well, um, there's going to be a force acting downwards due to its weight. So this weight is because it's got mass and it's attracted to the Earth due to its gravitational field. But there's also, once this starts moving up into the air, so this is now moving, because it's moving upwards and it's colliding with air particles, there's going to be this air resistance. And this air resistance is acting in the opposite direction. So as the shuttle is launched, there's going to be a downwards force in addition to the weight due to its air resistance. But there must be something pushing it forward. And in this case, it was due to the thrust from all of the engines. So we're talking about a massive force there as this solid fuel booster was kind of, you know, ejecting stuff out the back. So what we might have as well is the thrust. But when you start to add more and more forces to one thing, it starts to get a little bit more complicated. And actually what we can do is we can replace all of these different force arrows with one equivalent arrow that basically shows the result of all of these forces. And we call this the resultant force. And I'm just going to do this in red to make that quite clear. So what would this resultant force be? Well, let's think about a few numbers because this is what we like to do in physics. Uh, let's imagine the weight, because it had a mass of two million kilograms, the weight is going to be about 20 million newtons. And we write that as 20 mega newtons. Now, the air resistance would change. Actually, as this would get faster and faster, it collides with more particles per second, so the air resistance increases. But let's imagine at this time, the air resistance is equal to 20 mega newtons. And we can see because these are the same size force, I've got the same size arrow for both of these. And that's really important when it comes to representing forces. Uh, let's imagine the, th the thrust at this time was equal to 60 mega newtons. So we're talking big numbers with something like this. So what's the resultant force going to be? Well, what we can do is basically, because these are all in one kind of up or down direction, we can just start to add or take them away. So if I just move these to the side, effectively what we have is there's an upwards force of 60 mega newtons. And from that, we take away 20 mega newtons due to its weight, and we take away 20 mega newtons due to the air resistance. So what's left? Well, it's really the distance from here to here, which if we think about our resultant force, is the same as a resultant force of 20 mega newtons up. So in this case here, the way I do that is I'd say, well, let's say upwards is positive. So we're going to have 60 newtons, mega newtons, minus 20 mega newtons, minus the other 20 mega newtons. And that then gives a resultant force in this case of 20 mega newtons. And because force is a vector, we need to think about a direction as well. So I'm just going to put an arrow there to show that this is in the upwards direction. So that's what we really have when we talk about resultant force in an object. It's really an equivalent value, an equivalent arrow, that represents the sum of all the different forces acting on that object. In this case, it's relatively straightforward because everything is either up or down. But we can get a little bit more complicated. We can maybe think about what would happen if you had a force acting up and a force acting to the side, where we might then get a resultant which is acting at an angle. But in the kind of simple case, which is going to be loads of the kind of questions you're going to be doing at GCSE, all we're thinking about is replacing um, all of these forces with one equivalent arrow that we call the resultant force.